Hi, it's Hobbs and Mr. Lim here, and this uh, is going to be a video about the production of ammonia. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to learn about how we produce ammonia, and this is important, link previous uh, production of ammonia to previous chemistry topics. Okay, so production of ammonia. It's called the Haber process. It combines nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas to form ammonia using that equation. Okay, um, if you hadn't worked that out, that, that is an exothermic reaction and it is a forward reaction produces less gas particles. Okay, so what do they do? Uh, they maximize rate by having a high temperature and high pressure. So remember, rate, just think year 11 concepts. Maximize yield by low temperature and high pressure. Okay, so therefore we're going to have a compromise in temperature of around about 400 to 450 degrees Celsius, a high pressure of around 200 atmospheres, which is like in kilopascals, that's 220,000 kilopascals, okay, which is, you know, quite high, and an iron catalyst with a, a potassium hydroxide promoter. Okay, so these are the considerations, and you should recognize that you have to um, pick out whether it's maximizing rate or yield, and then discussing the compromise, okay. Um, no, oh, why have I got this again? Why would I have this slide again? Ah, that's why. Okay, so we have uh, the, uh, the, what's it, the, the temperatures and their, um, and their relative yields and at various pressures as well. Okay, so we can see that a high temperature, high temperature, makes it very, uh, makes a low yield, okay? So even though you can have a high rate, you can have a low yield, which is not that useful. And even as you increase the pressure, as you increase the pressure, um, the yield goes up, which is uh, what that diagram is showing, okay? Um, so this is a diagram of how ammonia is produced. Let's go through it. Okay, so the reaction is continuous. That's one of the important things to remember. So remember that the rate then is more important than the yield. Okay, so the nitrogen and hydrogen gases are combined in the reactor chamber. So here's your nitrogen, here's your hydrogen. You've dumped them in into your reactor chamber. Okay, um, the mixture is continuously removed and cooled. Okay, so as it goes through this thing, there will be NH3 produced. But there'll also be H2 and there's also be N2. Okay, and it'll go into this uh, condenser tower. Okay, so when it goes to this condenser tower, because, you know, it's piped in at the bottom, it'll rise up. Okay, and as it rises up, it'll cool down the stuff that's inside this pipe, the coolant. Okay, so it'll transfer its heat energy to the coolant. That means at the in, it'll be cold, but on the out, it'll be hot. Okay, and ultimately what will happen is that the NH3 will condense. Okay, so the ammonia condenses first when cooled, turns into a liquid and uh, collected at the bottom of the cooling tower. Why does ammonia condense first? Well, wouldn't it be great to remember about melting and boiling points and uh, explaining why ammonia has a um, higher melting boiling point than nitrogen and hydrogen gas? All right, so again, linking to old topics. Okay, so um, that uh, is cooled. The unreacted nitrogen and hydrogen go back to the uh, reaction chamber and the liquid NH3 goes to the bottom. Okay, now in terms of green chemistry principles, this hot... Uh, stuff can go all the way back to here, and it can preheat that uh, N2 and H2 that's going in. Alternatively, it can be used for electricity um, to power the station, whatever. All right, a um, couple of other things. Uh, you could be thinking about acid-based topics by showing how ammonia is um, acidic. You can be talking about redox by showing that this is a redox reaction. A um, whole bunch of other stuff that you could be uh, discussing in terms of the production of ammonia. Okay. Um, hydrogen gas uh, is also formed in various ways. Number one can be the electrolysis of water. Again, a redox reaction. Okay, so maybe you could be like shown uh, a electrolytic cell and it uh, turning water into hydrogen and oxygen gas. All right. Um, steam reforming of methane, which is the cheapest and you know therefore the one that's done the most. Again, you could be um, showing that this is a redox reaction and work out the oxidation numbers of all of these things. Um, and cracking of methane, again, another redox reaction to get your pure H2. Ultimately, also what you need to know for this one is that this one is the most environmentally friendly, whereas this one is the cheapest. So which one do you think gets done? The cheap one, them, them terrible people who are just out to make money. Okay, so that's the production of ammonia. 
um, some various ideas there, maximizing rate and yield, and then that idea of the reactor and the continuous reaction. You kind of need to know it so you can describe it so that you can be like, yes, this is how it's made. All right, adios.